Hey guys, and welcome to the Chemistry Shack. In this video, I'll be making liquid chlorine and reacting it with a few things. But first, I'll start with a warning. Chlorine gas is obviously very dangerous, so do this experiment either in a fume hood or outside with a respirator. This is my setup to generate liquid chlorine. I have a chlorine generator, followed by a drying tube containing calcium chloride, a test tube to condense the dry chlorine, and then a sodium hydroxide trap. The sodium hydroxide will neutralize the chlorine so that it doesn't enter the atmosphere. The funnel in the trap serves to prevent suckback. To generate the chlorine gas, I first add 40 grams of TCCA or trichloroisocyanuric acid to the chlorine generation flask. I then add 50 milliliters of 31.45% hydrochloric acid to the addition funnel. To liquefy the chlorine, I am using a bath of dry ice and acetone. The bath is insulated with styrofoam to make sure that it stays cold. So I begin the generator by slowly dripping HCl onto the TCCA. The reaction generates chlorine, which you can see as a pale yellow-green gas. And after only 10 minutes, we have collected a pretty modest amount of liquid chlorine in the test tube. I took this outside to do a few experiments with it. You can see that it's already boiling, even though it's only been outside for a couple of seconds. Anyway, the first thing I tried was reacting it with steel wool. So I heated up some steel wool in a torch and then added it to the test tube. There's actually not much reaction initially, but that's because the steel wool isn't contacting the liquid chlorine. However, when I shake up the test tube, the chlorine is able to contact the iron and it leads to a spectacular reaction. The red fumes produced are iron chloride. This reaction produces a lot of heat, which is evidenced by the sparks flying off the steel wool. If you look closely at the bottom of the test tube, you can actually see the iron glowing red hot as well. After this experiment, there was surprisingly still some liquid chlorine at the bottom of the test tube, so I decided to see how magnesium metal would react with it. I heated up a magnesium ribbon in a blowtorch until it was white hot and then added it to the test tube. The reaction of chlorine with magnesium is much more violent than the reaction of chlorine with steel wool because magnesium is much more reactive than iron. Here's the original audio so that you can hear what the reaction sounded like. So next I decided to try reacting the liquid chlorine with lithium, which is even more reactive than magnesium. I lit the lithium on fire and then poured liquid chlorine on top of it. Well, that wasn't nearly as spectacular as I thought it was going to be. At this point, I could have made more liquid chlorine and tried the experiment again, but I'm kind of really lazy, so I just decided to burn the rest of the lithium. Lithium burns with a beautiful red color as it reacts with oxygen to form lithium oxide. I think this serves as a great reminder that if an experiment ever fails, just give up and start burning lithium. An interesting side note is that you can't actually use water to put out a lithium fire. Here I am adding water to some smoldering lithium and you can see it roars back to life. The water actually reacts with the lithium producing flammable hydrogen gas and flammable gases aren't that great at putting out fires. Well, that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and share it with your friends. Also, make sure to subscribe so that you can keep up with my newest experiments and projects. Finally, I have a Twitter account now and you can follow me at the Kim Shack. Thanks for watching!